the joy of seeing a child open the boxes for the first time is just, it's incredible. We are so excited. Many of the children receive the shoe boxes for the first time in their life. We pray that these boxes that we use bring a lot of happiness and joy, but more importantly, the gospel to each heart, all these little children around the world. No greater need and no greater time than right now for us to go out and serve boldly. This is what these shoe boxes are all about, to go out and to bring a hope of Jesus Christ around the world. I'm just so amazed at what God does each and every year. This is an opportunity to impact the lives of millions of children, just like you've seen. But we need more boxes for next year. Every box is an opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So thank you, and God bless each and every one. Turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, that's where we're going to be. Uh, that's going to be where our main text is going to be this morning. And so if you want to turn your Bible so that you're ready, um, if you have a notebook, make sure to get that out, grab a pen. There's some pens in the seat back in front of you as well. Uh, I want to encourage you to jot down some notes. That's something I say every single week because when we write it down, we, or we have a way to go back and remember what it was that the Lord spoke to us in the service. Uh, and so if the Lord spoke to you during worship, write it down. If the Lord speaks to you through this message, write it down. Um, if you don't have your Bible, if you don't have a pen, then you can follow the steps on the screen uh, behind me. You can download the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, you can engage with the sermon outline that's there, and you can uh, jot some notes down inside of the app as well, and uh, it'll be there saved for you so that you can go back and uh, be reminded of what the Lord has spoken to you. Uh, so Luke chapter 15 is where we will be in just a moment, but before we get there, I just want to open up with a story. Um, all of us went to kindergarten at one point, right? Uh, such uh, Some people didn't, okay. Uh, hopefully you know your ABCs. <laughs> Uh, but kindergarten, it's kind of where a lot of us begin in our education, and uh, that's where Grayson, number four in our family, is at. He's in, in kindergarten, and, uh, and uh, it, every school system has some kind of disciplinary system in place to help teachers maintain um, their classroom and control of that, and uh, you know, there's different systems in different places, and uh, at the school that he goes to at, at Hudsonville, uh, he, uh, one of the systems they use is they mark down students, you know, and if uh, you get a couple, and a mark's really not a big deal, all right, you can, all of us as kids make mistakes uh, uh, and don't always follow instructions perfectly, and so it's just a way for them to learn as well, uh, but what happens is they get, uh, have all their names on the wall, and they have these clips, and if they do something they're not supposed to, they get clipped or marked down. Uh, and so we always talk to the kids about that uh, after we pick them up from school. And, and Grayson one day this week said, uh, how, you know, how was your day, Grayson? He's like, it was good, but I got clipped down. And we're like, wait, what? What happened? What did you do? He said, well, uh, the teacher was talking and giving instruction, and um, I just decided to stand up and wander around the room. Uh, and we were, or he said, that's what the teacher said. I said, okay, why, well, why did you do that? He said, well, what is wonder? He said, what is wonder? I, I stood up, but what does wonder mean? Like, he didn't really understand what this concept was. He knew that's why it got clipped down, but he didn't understand why. Uh, and we just thought that was funny, and we explained it to him, and he was like, oh, okay, yeah. You can't stand up while the teacher's talking and just do whatever you want to do, right? Uh, but the crazy thing about that is we are all wanderers. We all tend to wander around even whenever we don't realize it. And here's what Isaiah 53, 6 has to say about that. It says, all of us like sheep have strayed away, have wandered off. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him, meaning Jesus, the sins of us all. You know, we do have this tendency to be wanderers. Uh, we tend to drift off, and, and uh, it just happens naturally. Uh, if we're not careful about it, it just happens, and we don't even realize uh, where we've gotten to. Uh, you know, there's this reference uh, in this passage of Scripture, and you see it um, um, all throughout Scripture, multiple references to this, but us being kind of related uh, to sheep and, and God being related to the good shepherd that helps care for the sheep. And uh, we all tend to wander off, and we need uh, the shepherd to rein us back in uh, because sheep aren't really that intelligent of animals. You know, I've shared this with you before. They're, they're kind of stupid. I don't like to use that word very often, but sheep are pretty dumb. Uh, they just kind of wander off, and uh, they wander off of cliffs. 
They uh, jump into ditches that they shouldn't be in. You know, I shared one of those funny clips with you a couple of months ago. And sheep just put themselves in harm's way without even knowing it. And so we need the good shepherd as sheep to guide us, uh, to rein us back in. But it's also a decision that we have to make because we are the ones that wander off. And we are the ones that don't stay close to our shepherd. And here's the truth. The further away that you get from God, the more trouble that's going to follow you. Trials, difficulty, stress, and more things are just going to keep going wrong. And a lot of that is a result of us not cooperating with our creator. We're not following the plan and the path that he has for our lives. And the Bible says that the way of the ungodly is rough. It's full of thorns, it's difficult, and it's a rocky road. But you know, over here on the other hand, when we're close to God, it's a little bit different. Uh, We're not exempt at all from trials, uh, from difficulty, for hard things that we have to walk through. But we have a promise that he will equip us for every good work. He equips us. He gives the righteous favor. He blesses their way. And so as we grow into the men and women that God has designed us to be, he gives us his favor, and he shows us how to shift and how to adapt through any difficulty that comes our way. And that's the difference between someone that has wandered off far away from their shepherd and one that has stayed and remained close to him. You know, I'm guessing most of us in the room today have some desire to be closer to him. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here this morning, right? Uh, You'd be at home in your PJs, sipping on some coffee, eating a late breakfast, and getting ready to watch some NFL that kicks off in about an hour and a half. (laughs) Uh, You know, you you probably wouldn't be here this morning, uh, but you are here. And so there's a good chance that you in some way, shape, form, desire to be closer to God. You know, but if you're kind of in this place of maybe where you've wandered off, then we need to answer this question, how can we get back to being close to him? You know, there's going to be some of us here this morning that don't at all have a relationship with God. You don't even know what that looks like. There's some of us in here this morning that maybe a long time ago we surrendered our lives to Jesus. We made a decision that we were going to follow him, but for whatever reason, there's just been some distance there. Uh, It hasn't quite been the same. We don't really know his voice and haven't really felt his presence in a long time. And there's going to be others of of us here this morning that kind of have this back and forth game that we play with God. We get really close to him and then we distance ourselves from him. We wander far off and then we get back close to him. And there's this back and forth game that tends to happen. And I want you to know as your pastor, my desire for all of us is that we have this closeness with our Father. that We have this closeness with our Creator. I want us to be surrounded in His presence. I want us to have that deep friendship with the Holy Spirit. And I want us to have that joy that can only come from being in communion with Him. And so the title of today's message is, um, I've formed it in a way that it's an invitation to us all. And so the title of today's message is Come Close to God. That's the invitation for all of us this morning is to come close to God. Now, if you're in the main text there in Luke chapter 15, that's where we're going to read. We're going to begin in verse 11, and we're going to read a parable that Jesus taught. What is a parable? Uh, Jesus used these uh, fictional stories. They weren't real stories, but he used them as a way to help us understand things about the kingdom of God, uh, certain principles and things that he was trying to communicate so that we could see it in story form to understand what he was communicating. Uh, and so Jesus gives us the parable of the lost son uh, in verses 11 through 24. And so we're going to read that together. And here's how it goes. To illustrate the, f- uh, the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of my estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all of his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all of his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. 
He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The younger man became so hungry that even the pods uh, he was feeding, the pigs, looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Verse 17, when he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Right? (laughs) What an awesome story. Uh, This parable that Jesus is speaking to us is applicable in so many different ways. Uh, You know, I hear a lot of people say, well, this parable is really all about the son's posture. Uh, There's some that will say, no, it's really all about the foster. The, the father's posture. I really think it's probably a little bit of both, right? Uh, but I think there's some very significant things that we can learn from this in regards to this invitation of coming closer to God. And so there's four application points that we're going to look at this morning and how do we get back to that closeness, that nearness, that fellowship, that communion uh, with the Savior. And so here's our very first point this morning. In order to get closer to God, Point number one, you've got to get fed up with your life. This is where it all begins. In order to come closer to God, you've got to get fed up with your life. You've got to get fed up with where you're at and how things are going. We've got to get to this place of saying, I don't want to live my life this way anymore. Something's got to give. Something's got to change. I'm tired of being lonely. I'm just too busy. I don't even like myself. So why would anyone like me, and I am tired of living this kind of life? And if we want to be close to God, then there has to become this dissatisfaction on the inside of us that says, something's got to give. Man, something's got to change. It can't stay this way any longer. We've got to decide that we are done with having this distance between us and God. There's got to be this holy discontentment that has to arise up on the inside of us and says, no more. You know, in this story of the lost son, he got pretty desperate because he was hungry. He was in an uncomfortable place. He realized that something had to change. He didn't really know where to turn. He became hungry. And it says in verse 17, I love this, that he came to his senses, that something finally clicked and he realized, man, something's got to give. And we learn later on in the verse that he went home to the Father. He returned back home. And so my question for us here this morning is, are we there yet? Are we fed up with how life is going? Are we tired of this distance between us and God? Have we come to our senses yet? And are we fed up with where we're at? You know, the crazy thing about this story is that the Father wants us to be at home with him. He doesn't want the distance between us. But it's the Son that has to make the effort. It's the Son that has to be the one that returns back home. Because here's something that's so true is that he wants that closeness because he loves you so much. He allows us to go to these places of discomfort because he wants us to come back home. And so I believe this is the first step for all of us if we want to have that closeness with our creator. It's getting fed up with where we're at in our lives. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. 
If you will look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. We will find that closeness with God if we will get to that place of being serious about knowing him. But it's got to start with us desiring for a change. It's got to be us being tired of there being a lack of relationship with our maker. We've got to get tired of this mediocrity that's in our lives, that's in this relationship. We've got to want more. He wants your whole heart. Secondly, in order to come close to God, you've got to own up to your sin. In order to come close to God, you've got to own up to your sin. In verses 18 and 19 of Luke 15, it says, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. You see, when the son came to his senses, he confessed that he messed up that he made a mistake. And that next step is an important one, and he approached the Father. We won't have that communion and that closeness with our Father until we confess our sins. It's got to be us responding and saying, God, I haven't been living your way, but I've been living selfishly for myself. And I confess that today. And I confess that I am in need of an alignment. Maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, and so maybe you haven't really fallen away from him because you haven't come close to him yet. Then as you get that new set of attires, you need an alignment in your car because some things have got to change. But maybe you made that decision in the past and you had those tires and you were following Jesus at a time, but uh, life's hard things begin just to take you off and you started pursuing the things that you wanted to pursue. And so this morning, you're not in need of an alignment, you're in need of a, a realignment. And so where are you at this morning? It's got to be about us letting go of all the control, owning up to our sins and turning to Father. Isaiah 59.2 says, It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. Do you feel distant between you and Lord? Do you feel distance in that relationship? Do you feel like he's a million miles away? No, do you feel like there's maybe something in your way of the presence of God? Like there's just something that's there blocking you from getting close to him. Maybe you're saying, God, I can't hear you. I can't see you. I can't feel you. And I just feel like I'm over here talking to myself. How many of you have ever felt that way before? And what causes that distance between us and God? Can I just submit to you this morning? that there's a good chance that it's tied to an area of sin that needs to be confessed and pushed out of the way so that we can have that closeness and that communion with our Father once again. Because here's some truth. Here's something that I believe and that I know. He hasn't went anywhere. He hasn't left you. He's been right there waiting for you the whole time. He loves you and he desires that closeness with you. He hasn't moved. We are the ones that moved. We are the ones that walked away. We are the ones that didn't have our tires on like they should. And so slowly but surely, we've drifted off the path. And now we need an alignment to be back in relationship with him. We're the ones that's moved away, and it's happened because we've given our hearts and our love to other things. When we do that, the Bible is very clear about what happens in our lives. It says that we, at that point, that we have slipped into idolatry. Because we have given our hearts and our love to other things, to other people. 
And an idol can be your car, it can be a relationship, it can be your job, it can be what's hanging up in your closet, and anything that you love more than Jesus. And here's the reality, church. We are as close to God as we choose to be. Let that sink in for just a moment. We are as close to God as we choose to be. We can't blame that on anybody else, that distance that's there. That's on us. We've got to own up to our sin. Thirdly, in order to come close to God, you've got to offer up your all. In order to come close to God, you've got to offer up your all. We see this in the parable. The son decides that he's going to go home. He tells the father that he sinned against him. He's no longer worthy to be a son. Uh, he asks him to take him on as a hired servant. And this is what it says at the beginning of verse 20. So he returned home to his father. He went back home. He submitted his life to his father. Once again, he offered up his all. He returned home. We too should return home and offer God the Father all that we are. We should surrender our lives to him afresh and anew each day. And here's the thing about this. It's progressive, right? This isn't something that fully happens from one day to the next, but it's just giving him one area this day. In another week or two from now, giving him this area. It, it's something that takes time. It's not something that happens from one day to next. But here's what this is. It's a posture. It's a decision. And it's a lifestyle that we have got to be committed to following through no matter what. Father, I surrender. I've fallen away from you, but I'm back. Help me. Here's this part of my life. Here's my marriage. Here's this friendship. Here's this relationship. Here's my job. Here's my passions. I submit them to you. I am yours. You're going to mess up along the way. Your pastor messes up along the way. I am far from perfect. We are all far from perfect, but what we need to do is quickly return home. Don't stay gone for a long time. Don't stay gone long enough where you get to that place of where you're starving. Return home. Keep on surrendering. You need to keep offering up your lives to God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this. So all of us who have had this veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Let me give you an example of what I believe this passage is communicating here. I believe it's saying that we are in the metamorphosis process. How long has it been since you heard that word? <laughs> Kindergarten, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> metamorphosis if you've forgotten is that process from being that caterpillar that transforms and changes into this beautiful butterfly man you're called to be a beautiful butterfly no I'm just kidding <laughs> I know you don't want to hear that this morning <laughs> But here's the deal. We are all in the metamorphosis process of being transformed from these broken, sinful, and selfish individuals to these whole, growing, and others-focused followers of Jesus Christ. That's what he wants to do when he's removing the veil from our eyes to transform us into his glorious image. When we walk in surrender, when we offer up our all to a holy God, he transforms our ugliness. He transforms our brokenness, and we become warriors. 
We become conquerors. We become victors in Jesus' name. We become vessels of healing and hope and extensions of the love of the Father to the world that is around us that is ugly and broken. Do you see the pattern? He wants to pull the ugliness and brokenness from our lives, and he wants to make us whole. And as he makes you whole, he wants you to go out and to help others do the same process. In order to come close to God, lastly, point number four, you've got to lift up your praise. In order to come close to God, you've got to lift up your praise. You've got to thank him for his grace. Oh, my goodness, has he been gracious to us. We don't deserve his love. We don't. We've got to thank him for that love. We've got to thank him for that goodness. And we see this happen at the very end of this parable, at the end of the story that we just saw. The son returns home in verses 22 through 24, and this is what happens. His father said to his servants, quick, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Maybe he walked away from sonship, but I'm restoring that to him. And in verse 23, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. You've got to get your praise on. Because when you have right standing with the Father, life becomes a party. There's joy. There's happiness. There's contentment that we find in relationship with our maker. We will be faced with hard times and difficulty. We aren't exempt from those things, but we can find abundance and fullness of life when we are right in right standing with Abba Father. And when you begin to lift up your praise, those things will fall off of you, church. Psalm 68, 4 says this, Sing praises to God and to his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence. And I'm going to make a bold statement here this morning. Okay, are you ready for it? Some of you don't praise like you should on Sunday mornings. Katie and our team do a fabulous job of leading us into the presence of God. But we're over here, you know, standing with hands in our pockets, you know, kind of looking like we're defeated and don't know what to do. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of like we're at a golf tournament and we just do the golf clap and we're real reserved in our worship and we don't get our praise on like we should. We are postured as if we are defeated. But listen to me here. The way that you worship and praise could be the thing that's hindering your closeness to the Father. I know what some of you are thinking. Ah, Pastor Blake doesn't know me. I'm reserved. I'm laid back. I'm quiet. Until the game comes on. Until your kid scores the winning touchdown. <laughs> until you win. Until you finish that business deal that you've been working on for months and maybe even years. And then all of a sudden, you're a little hyped. You're up there a hooping and a hollering over something that's surface and not real and deep. We need to get our praise on in this house, church. And we have got some things to celebrate. <laughs> Why aren't we praising him in his presence? If things are hard, we need to praise from a place of victory. If you're waiting on a promise, you need to start worshiping like it's already happened. In the seasons where some things are changing, and maybe some things are being stripped from your life, 
you need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. You need to praise his holy name. Listen, I understand being reserved in worship. I grew up in a church that was very reserved in worship. It was almost frowned upon to express emotion in a service. And But I can remember the first time I'm holding on to that pew in front of me and the presence of God is there and I just go, man, something happened. I just felt the overwhelming presence of the Lord. It's like, yep, keep letting go, Blake. I remember going to Bible college. This was a very charismatic Bible college. <laughs> and people would push me in what I knew was worship. And they started jumping. They started dancing. And I'm like, I don't know. You're not supposed to do that. It's a sin. But I was like, all right, I'll try it. I started jumping. I started moving. And some things started to fall off my life that did not need to be there. You need to get free. Man, I can remember shouting for the first time in worship. Man, there was a moment in our men's retreat. I don't know how many of you guys remember this, uh, but there was a man in our church that was giving his testimony. And my goodness, what he was sharing was absolutely incredible. And man, there was this thing that I was just feeling in the spirit. And as soon as he finished sharing, I just grabbed the microphone and said, Freedom! And man, something broke in that place. You need to shout. You've got to let go. You've got to give it to him. Man, something will shift in your life and there will be this closeness that begins to happen when you begin to break out and lift up your praise. He comes close. Joy fills your heart and hope will begin to arise again in you. So listen to me, church. Get your praise on. Did you hear me? I'm going to say it again. Get your praise on. It's in his presence where so many things happen. In order for us to find this closeness with God, we have got to get fed up with where we're at in our lives. That's where it all begins. Then the next step is owning up to what's wrong, to owning up to sin. That it's posturing ourselves with this open-handed approach of surrendering our lives to God and saying, here I am. I'm showing up. I'm coming back home. And then as you begin to do that, you've got to start praising like you've never praised him before. Because some things need to fall off your life. Revival needs to happen in Kalamazoo Church. And we need a move of God. Not just here, throughout this nation into the ends of the earth. And if we aren't getting our praise on, then the Bible says that the rocks and trees are going to cry out. We're going to have a missed opportunity. And so in closing this morning, in just a moment we're going to do something. I don't know if you were able to, to, to grab the communion cups. We'll, if not, we'll get you one here in just a moment. But we're going to close the service out with communion this morning, and we're going to uh, reflect on the saving grace of, of Jesus Christ. Um, but before we do that, just like we end every single service, um, I want us to ask this question. Holy Spirit, what is it that you're saying to me? Right there where you're at, would you just begin to just posture yourself in this place to be able to hear from the Lord for a moment? Think about what he spoke to you during worship. Think about what he's been speaking to you through the message today and just say, Holy Spirit, what is it that you're saying to me? In James chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, it says this. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. Would you stand to your feet with me this morning? Hey, Firm Foundation, Pastor Blake here. Thanks so much for tuning in to our service. We hope that you are encouraged 
through the service today and that you are strengthened in your relationship with the Lord. We hope you enjoy the message today. God bless.